Hello, and welcome to Injustice, Gods Among Us. Originally came out on the PS360 in 2013, we're instead using the launch PS4 version, just because it has all of the content on it. So this game was different. Very different. It was still a 2D fighter, of course. Got all these battles. Let's just... Let's just stick with classic. No reason to rock the boat. So, the characters on the sides of the character select screen were added in as DLC later. Otherwise, 24 heroes and villains. With the heroes and villains separated on the left and right sides respectively. So, for this particular run, I wanted to pick a character I was more or less familiar with from the offset. You know, I always was a cat person. As you can see, there are alternate skins from the offset, and well, I always did like the Arkham games. Catwoman. I love the effect of this ladder, like the third-person perspective. You run along now. I have business to attend to. So, this is traditionally a four-button fighter. Light, medium, and heavy attacks. There is a fourth button, and we will get to it. But, in case it hasn't been obvious, I'm very proficient with this character. So, the fourth button in question is known as a trait is each heroes and villains unique attribute with catwoman it's called cat scratch the more combos you do like the more hits you get in a single combo the more damage that builds up you get more scratches it's more of a percentage probability thing. There are certain moves that allow you to build scratches right away, yeah. like this dodge. It can be done high or low, and if you succeed at it, you get a free scratch. You can empty out these scratches at any time by pressing the trait button. And you get a combo at the end. The more scratches you have, the more this particular combo ender will do. There are super moves. You build more meter the more you get your butt whooped. There are a few universal buttons, for example. Forward and heavy is usually this ground bounce attack. Back and heavy is a different matter. And we will get to it when someone is more healthy.
Time to bring the hammer down. Begin. There are a few more things about this game, particularly in the stages. Depending on what type of character you are, depends on the type of hazards you can use. If you're super heroic, you'll be able to throw something. If you're more of a nimble cat, you'll be able to ride something or jump off of something. Or kick them into something. The back heavy! is normally a wall bounce. But if you're at certain ends of the stage, it bounces them into another stage hazard. This is a multi-hit attack where they bounce across the stage until they end up on an entirely different level. There is one other part. Is that all you got? Thank you. This kitty has claws. It's known as the wager system. You wager your meter when you break an attack. If it exceeds the amount of meters spent by the attacker, you gain health back. If the attacker wins that exchange, they deal more damage. <laughs> one like if you're coming here from mk9 you're immediately in for a rude awakening in lack of buttons and how much the stage matters like i can jump off that bat signal it'll help me get out of the corner each of these stage hazards ones that can actively be used as attacks are 100% unblockable. Well, obviously you wouldn't be able to block a... Obviously you wouldn't be able to block a subway train. Opinion, the thing that kind of works against this game is in the roster itself. In trying to ensure that the game is 50-50 on heroes and villains, the villain picks feel more obscure than the hero picks. Sorry, base kind of a problem. Alright. Using super the next chance I get. Yep, I was holding block, could not block the hazard. So 
yeah, super move spend all four meters. Probably not best using it when the opponent's down to their last health bar. Because yeah, the more the more butt that gets kicked, the more meter they get for wagers. I was trying to keep my offense short and sweet so as not to trigger the wager. They can get a fair amount of health back if they use all their meter unopposed. To me, some of the designs are a little questionable, like Ares here. He reminds me less of Ares and more of what would happen if Netherrealm made the Shredder from the Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's not a bad thing, mind you. It's not a bad thing to remind me of him, it's just... You're just reminding me of wasted opportunities. Okay, could not continue that. Also, the other thing. There is no block button. In Injustice, you block by holding away from your opponent's attack. It definitely takes some getting used to. Alright, gotta take it easy. Ah, shit! That was my everything. I thrive on time. I'll claw your eyes out. Yeah, it was supposed to be two heavy kicks. Fortunately, we have down one. <laughs> Another thing that kind of honestly bothers me is the overall control layout, which the first thing I did was modify it. You will know the meaning of fear. Imagine, if you will, your light, medium, heavies. I'm using a PlayStation controller. Your light, medium, heavies are on square, triangle, and X. Considering I like all my buttons in a row, that that ain't gonna cut it. Okay, Sinestro, I, you are my you're my secondary, so I know how much of a problem you can be. Another thing that kind of bothered people about this game was the walk speed. Because considering how well this benefits zoners, yeah, it would kind of be a problem. Die screaming. This kitty has claws. Just gotta be sure we get the most damage we can. Keeping a meter for herself. Yeah. 
Oh, I love that they gave me a combo that's just press heavy three times in a row. Emphasis on heavy. Ah, Lex Luthor, my old friend. He's very different in Injustice than he is in MK vs. DC. No sumo palms. Must I remind you of my superiority? Begin. Very important I get the first hit. By the way, you get meter. There is also pushback as well. Another thing that needs meter to work. All right, so this car, it works differently depending on who you play as. With Catwoman, I just place a bomb on it and it explodes. If you're a super powerful character that can lift it, you throw it at the opponent instead. trying to do last time. I don't know if you can block that. I would not be surprised if you couldn't. It's probably a low for all I know because explosion... It's been a long time since I've gone back to Injustice 1, but playing as Catwoman to me is like riding a bike. You never really forget. You just put your feet on the pedals and let your legs do the rest. game had only come out a couple of years later, you might have stood a chance. I'm gonna get my damage now. Not the wisest decision, but... I got you spend a meter. This mini don't like me. This kitty has claws. For the record, this can even happen when you're at 1% health. Fortunately, we can do a combo that negates the damage the Killer Frost just got back.
And that brings us to our final boss, which is... Superman. This Superman is a unique beast from the playable Superman. He may very well have this, because his trait is always on. That trait, by the way, includes increased damage, which considering this is Superman we're talking about, And considering this is Superman we're talking about, he has damage resistance. Would rather just take out the first life bar. around. Considering the health difference. Let's go all in. This is my world. This kitty has claws. He's gonna get more health back. Great. No problem. No. Off to the negative zone with you. Phantom Zone. That's that's the Phantom Zone, right? I I know comic books. At last, Superman had paid for what he had done to Catwoman. Feigning allegiance to his regime had cost Selina her beloved Batman and her best chance at happiness. Pride and anger kept her from attempting reconciliation with Bruce Wayne. But his inspiring reconstruction of Gotham and Metropolis fostered in her a desire to remain close to him. Until she was ready to approach him again, she did her part to keep Gotham's streets clear of crime. Nascent underworld organizations had both the bat and the cat to fear. So that is Injustice Gods Among Us. It was NetherRealm Studios getting their chance at the DC license. Their chance to break out of their mature, violent trademark. And instead focus on more of a mainstream Superman slash Batman vehicle. It wasn't a bad effort. I go back and forth on whether or not this or its sequel is the better game. Because of how much content the sequel put in. And personally, I gotta give it to this one. I think it is slightly more solid based on its mechanics. But the second one is no slouch either. We will get to it. 
for now, the ping-ponging back and forth between the Mortal Kombat franchise and the Injustice franchise would continue. With our next Mortal Kombat game, in my opinion, the best one in a long time. Next time, X marks the spot.